Good evening, class. Good evening. My name is Brooke Fraser. I'll be your moderator for this evening's lecture. And I'd like to welcome you to another lecture presented by the Syracuse class. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization that is dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation that was given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio and in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. And since that time, we have established various branch schools throughout the United States, Canada, Mexico, and certain other foreign countries. This New York State branch was established in 1969. At this time, I'd like to recognize the Syracuse Branch School Dean, Dr. Patrick Trevison, and the President, Dr. Robert Welch. Now, in this school, we use the true, correct, and original name of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. Our true name of our Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. <coughs> and the true name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua, which has been erroneously substituted by Jesus or Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and there are God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Now, Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord or God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove to you that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages contain any characters or letters that would make the sound that is produced by the letter J. Neither was a letter J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible and untrue renderings of the true name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized in his pure spirit state on this chart as a cloud. Now Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular nor descriptive shape and form. We have painted this cloud all around the edges of the chart <coughs> to show you that everything on this chart abides within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now Yahweh, knowing that man cannot perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the Word or Son, a superincorporeal being that is having the shape and the form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in a divine vision and understood with a divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. 
So the simple yet intelligent question that we all must ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time that he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of these names and title might be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Now also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him this tabernacle pattern in a vision. He further instructed Moses to build one exactly as he had seen it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments making up the one tabernacle pattern. We go forth in the school to show proof how that everything is made and operates according to the structure and to the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and how the absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now in this school we have 10 primary constitutional aims or objectives and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity and Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, caste, creed, sex, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers that are latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and produce uh, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, both practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose operating through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Intent is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our slogan is to speak the truth and our watchword is peace. At this time I'd like to have the class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Robert Welch. That'll be followed by the scripture reading, which is Romans 1, 15 through 22. That'll be read as all scriptures by our scripture readers, Dr. Scott Miller and Dr. Deb Cometti. Following that, I will do guest acknowledgments. Good evening, all. Good evening. <clears throat> Let's just take a moment. Bow our hearts and our minds and give the Creator His due, and that we're here to appreciate His great salvation of our souls that were just overshadowed with iniquity. He's brought us out with a strong arm and set our feet upon his purpose. We are so encouraged by his words and his understanding that he gives us on a daily basis and that this purpose is ready to fold and that he has made us ready and we thank him for his great salvation and endured the cross for each and every one of us. In Yahshua's name, may we all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah.
Good evening, class. Tonight's scripture will be read out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Train of the Scripture Research Association. Romans, the first chapter, verses 15 through 22. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the glad tidings to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the glad tidings of the Messiah, for it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of Yahweh shall be revealed from heaven against all impiety and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Elohim, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. That's Romans, the first chapter, 15 through 22. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge our visitors that came from far. Uh, we have Drs. Jimmy Gillard from Albany, New York. Drs. James Powell from Albany, New York. Both New York State Superintendents. Am I saying that right? Or Albany Superintendent, New York State Superintendent. I apologize. Dr. James Lamakia, East Syracuse Dean and New York State Treasurer. And Dr. Kathy Wood from Binghamton, also New York State Dean, and Dr. Lionel Von Manju from Hamilton, Ontario. Thank you. And our first speaker this evening will be Dr. Kathy Wood, New York State Dean, and from the Binghamton class. Good? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's good to be here, and thank you for allowing me to see your smiling faces and just reconnect a little bit with your branch uh, regarding our state officers and the board and by behalf of all of them. Um, we just want you all to know that you are supported. Um, it's been a long time since I've been here. It was, I had a quick chat with Dr. Trevison. I also want to thank the branch for being compliant with their monthly reports as international dictates. It's greatly appreciated. Also for um, having the liability insurance. Uh, this is just administrative and I just want to get it out of the way of my purpose of my visit and it's just to reconnect with all of you and thank you on behalf of the state and international as far as getting our reports to, out on time and there's just business of the school that needs to be taken care of and I appreciate that it has been taken care of and I do want to acknowledge that. Um, I also want to, as our state superintendent and treasurer here if there are any questions or any needs of anything i want you to be able to see faces to relate to and i know you're all looking at me like i'm crazy and get to the preaching and i will but this is important also because this school was founded by a man named dr henry clifford kinley in the year in 1931 who said he had a divine vision and revelation straight from the creator himself um, not trying to change anybody's mind or I am not uh, naive of our doctrinal differences 
but as much as I know I can't convince anyone of anything, neither can you convince me of what I'm aware of. Uh, to me, this thing is God came down in a body. His name was Henry Clifford Kinley, but he was not a physical man. He was God manifested on the earth plane, just as he did back as Emmanuel or Yahshua the Messiah. He started this school to show who he was, and he gave us some of the greatest mysteries that Bible could have. And he opened up the Bible to us. Not to, this is my testimony, not to make us Bible scholars, but to show who he was. He was the man that wrote that Bible so he could explain it to us. He went to the law and to the prophets, and it's beautiful mysteries, nothing wrong with them. Uh, had these charts painted to manifest his works and who he is and what he did and they were intention getters to as the scripture said he really is the gospel and we are not ashamed of him we are not ashamed of dr kinley we are not ashamed of god coming down in a body and this is my testimony and i can appreciate that i was born ignorant of that fact I was a black negative creature because I did not know my creator. And because I did not know my creator, that was back in the realm of eternity, he, he caused those negative spirits to come at, cast them down out of heaven. And we, <laughs> it was a surprise to, uh, to myself that I was one of those demons cast out into the earth because we know that everything the body is made up of is earth. So the crux of the matter is it's by his grace and his mercy that I can stand before you and say, I'm saved. Not by any works that I've done, not by any learning that I've done, not by any memorizing that I've done, not by anything but by grace and by mercy. And like I said, this is my testimony, mainly because of the scripture you chose. Romans 1.15, that I am not ashamed of the gospel. And for me, the gospel is a man. For me, the gospel is someone who came down, the God himself came down on the earth plane. His earthly name was Henry Clifford Kinley, but that really was God come down. And I'm so grateful and appreciative that I have not missed the time of his visitation. Has been missed for years and years and hundreds of years prior. Um, that's what my acknowledging of my creator is to me. That's how I know this earth plane, the weather is horrific. I mean, you don't know, could be tomorrow your, your basement's flooded. I hope not, because that's where I'm staying in your house. <laughs> but your basement could be flooded. I don't know about you, but I'm not looking forward to this upcoming election. I just, the commercials alone can drive a person insane. The cost of everything is crazy. Um, you can't even hardly get groceries anymore. Try and find a, I mean, you folks know, try and find a facility for a reasonable price. Try, I mean, just, he's, he's, he's causing this earth plane to make it so you have to see it's going to end soon. And we have to make our calling and election sure. And I know, I know that most of the people in this room do not agree with me, but I stand firm on what I believe just as much as I know you stand firm on what you believe. But this earth plane, we are all coming out of these bodies and we have to know for an assurity who we are. And this school, as the moderator states, every single class was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder. 
So anything you have down here came from, stemmed off of the founder and dean of this school, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley. And if you're looking at him like a physical man, you're gonna miss it. But if you can look at him as God himself, the one that created this earth plane, the one that's tromping, uh, wreaking havoc everywhere, hurricanes, floods, fires, volcanoes. It used to be back in the day when I was younger, they would end the news with the weather. Now they start the news with the weather. This, and Dr. Kinley said in 1962, was it, when those planets aligned, that the weather would never be the same, it, it would just be, and we thought in the 80s and 90s, oh, he was right, with a, a, look at now what he's done with this weather. The heat, the humidity, I mean, I only took my snowblower out a couple times last year, and normally, you know, and two years prior, I had, six feet of snow in my driveway. So this thing is, is unstable. But the watchword of this school is peace. Can someone mind getting me the definition of watchword? Because after the aims and after all the, the class sessions and after all of this, this is about a character and a nature. And we should be, with all this madness going on in this earth plane, we should be the most peaceful people in the world. Because we know who caused all this shenanigans going on. He's purposed it all. He's going to take it out. He's, all the signs are there. I mean, even the devil knows. <laughs> even the devil knows this thing's going out. And we need to know who we are. And we need to be at peace with who we are. What angers us and upsets us and gets us worried and anxious really is self-regard. That's why I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything because that's not my doing. That's the creator. That's our heavenly father is the only one can dictate what our understanding is and what it isn't. So I can't even with my husband, I, and this is going to be a silly story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. We were talking about we just got our water bill. It was really higher than it's ever been. And we couldn't figure it out because we don't have any leaks or anything like that. And he's like, well, you know, you do leave the water on when you brush your teeth. Come on. Now, it could have been an argument. You know, I could have been upset about something like that. Like, but that would have been self-regard. I'm not, you know, I, well, you know, I could have came back with them for something, but you don't. You're at peace. The only one you have regard for is your Heavenly Father. We're just eternally grateful for His grace and His mercy. Did anybody get the definition of watchword for me? Watchword. Thank you. A secret word used as a countersign, now chiefly a password or sign of recognition among members of the same society or class. A sentiment or motto as embodying a principle or guide to action, especially one used as a rallying cry or a signal. So our signal, my signal, individually and personally, and what I'm looking for is peace. And I'm telling you, I have it. And to hell with the earth plane, the family, the, the, the school, everything. This thing is about a nature. It's about comfort. It's about grace. It's about peace. And we can only attain that because God came down on the earth plane and he dictated who he was going to put his spirit in and who he wasn't going to put his spirit in. And we have to take comfort in grace and in mercy. So, that's really all I had on my heart and mind was to come. I was happy to preach the gospel as a man of Henry Clifford Kinley. That's where my comfort is. That's where my peace is. And I just appreciate uh, the time that you folks have given me this evening. Thank you.
Where's my Where's my lady with the Oh there she is. <laughs> Thank you so much. Our next speaker this evening will be Dr. Carm Warren. doesn't pop against it. Good evening. I'm very hey, happy and glad to be here. Welcome to our visitors. Um, I can go back to the scripture and start there. Let's go right to uh, 16, because this is Paul speaking. Uh, Romans 1 and 16. Mm -hmm. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, for it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. And we know that when Yahshua poured out his Holy Spirit, 50 days later, it was poured out in Pentecost to the Jews. And then seven years later, to the Gentiles. And this was the promise that was given Abraham back in the Old Testament, or the scriptures. And it says that it's faith, um, the next verse, but I'll stay here, um, to the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. And we know that our gospel is 1 Corinthians, let's get it, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. First Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you. See, there's salvation in it. You can be saved in this gospel. And when I was going to church, I thought the gospel was Mark, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, not knowing those were gospels, and they weren't even what this is all about. That was just um, during the life of the Messiah, walking around on the earth plane. Go ahead. By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I and we know you. we've always looked up that word vain with when we, you know, we're looking at the uh, commandments. Don't take my name in vain. Don't make it worthless. Mm -hmm. Don't make it empty. All of those things or cause it um, to have no effect. So this, um, unless you believed in vain, unless it was worthless to you, or it didn't mean anything to you, go ahead. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. And he received this himself. And Paul was one of the ones who was killing all of the Jews at one point. And then when he was turned around, he was one of the strongest believers and the strongest apostles there there was go ahead for i delivered unto you first of all that which i also received how that the messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures okay he died according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again he the buried. third day go ahead according to the scriptures so he went through his death according to the scriptures his burial according to the scriptures uh, resurrecting on the third day according to the scriptures. And we could go through any of these events in the Bible and it will give you um, different manifestations, but we're looking at principles. And those principles came from this tabernacle pattern because this tabernacle is the ark, it's the it's the original pattern of the universe, but it's Elohim. He's the archetype of this pattern. It's him. And if you um, look at this, we know that Yahweh Elohim came down in part in the flesh as Yahshua the Messiah. And that you can go through this tabernacle and see that he was the only true sacrifice. He's the washing. He is the, res the um, quickening. He, he says he's the, 
he's the bread of life. He's the light. He's the only intercessor. You can go through this whole thing and see him because it's all one spirit. They're all one of the same. I know the one thing that caught me coming into class was the name because I was studying art. And for a long time, I would place my name in the back of my work. And I had a teacher who came and said, you know, you don't go to a gallery and look at some master's work and flip it over to see who did it. They have their name. She said, if you don't want to put it like in the corner, on the bottom of the corner, make it part of your creation. Put it in the design. And when I came into class and I learned that Yahweh was the name, and you know, Moses got it at the burning bush, and that burning bush is so different than any other bush or any other twig that you would see because they're all round in configuration. And the burning bush, and I have one in my uh, bag, mm -hmm. the burning bush has four sides to that branch right. because it stands for the Y-H-W-H. -H. And, you know, we were told coming into class that you breathe that name and that he signed you, put it right inside of you. And the YHWH were glide letters, so you didn't need to use your tongue or anything in your mouth to make those sounds. And that, to me, was beautiful. And how important the name was. And I was thinking about how he showed me so many witnesses prior to coming into class. Because I had actually wanted to be a famous artist at one time, you know. Coming into class, it all went not important. Um, but my name was changing from Carmela Dimitri when I married my husband to Carmela Warren. And that was a bit of a challenge for me. And coming into class, you know, um, the fact that the name was so important, it was very important to me. So how much more would it be important to the Creator? And he gives you these little witnesses to show you how important his name is and that we should use it and not make it vain. The other, other uh, thing that happened to me was my husband and I went to a dance class prior to getting married because at that time there were bands and people were doing the foxtrot and the waltz and all those kinds of dances with the bands and we wanted to make sure we didn't look silly and we wanted to dance. Well, our last class, we were leaving and the uh, instructor said, well, next time I see you, you'll be Mr. and Mrs. William Warren. And on the way to the car, I was bawling. I was crying so much. And Bill asked me, what's wrong with you? What are you crying about? I said, well, I not only lost my last name, I lost my first name. Now I'm just Mrs. William Warren. I don't have a first name. I don't have a last name. It really, really hit home with me. So when I came in the class, that name meant a lot. And I'm sorry I have to say this. I know you see things one way, we, but I was very saddened when classes were breaking up. And all those people in the class were my spiritual brothers and sisters. And it was so hard for me. And I couldn't understand why. And Yahshua showed me that I told you I signed you inside and you didn't have to put your name on the back of something and this is what I felt was going on I it seemed like the name Bob and um, Lionel could you come up please I've done this before at one time but it's been a long it's time no nope. all right so if Yahweh wanted to sign his name on your back Bob would have to follow you because you've got that name there, right? So he would be following a man. Okay? Now, if you didn't know what was on your back, yep. you'd have to depend on a man to tell you. So Bob would have to tell you that says Yahweh. So you're either depending on a man or following a man. But that's not what he wanted us to do. Mm -hmm. And Okay, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I just felt that I read so many transcripts with Dr. Kinley saying, I'm not your savior. I can die in the middle of the road and I'll just be another guy laying there dead. And he always put, um, he glorified the Father. He glorified Yahweh. He glorified Yahshua. He didn't want his name. He didn't want his pictures anywhere. His name is so tiny up here. He didn't want to be glorified. And that's what we've been seeing in this class. And that's what our understanding is. And Dr. Kinley did have a vision and a revelation, and we can't take that away from him. We know all of this was just phenomenal. And that he said the school was to raise ministers and to save souls. And that's why he established the school, to share this vision and revelation with as many people as he could. And he knew, you know, you go to Ephesians, he knows that it's predestined that it was predestined from the foundation of the world. He called the people that were his chosen. There's nothing you can do to get his Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He, uh, that was decided way back when. You can read it in John. Let's go to John um, 3 and 2, I think it is. <clears throat> or 17 and 2? Yeah, 17 and 2. I'm sorry. Yep. John 17 and 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So he can't give eternal life to whoever he wants to give. Mm -hmm. It's already decided on. It's only those that are given him. He doesn't have free will to do whatever he wants to do. Yahweh Elohim, when he came in, the purpose was set and he had to carry it out. He was the creator in this, in this uh, super incorporeal anthropomorphic um, type being. And he, he was seen by the prophets and visions. Those were the kinds of things so the Bible could be written. And then coming down in the flesh, he was salvation for your inner man. This, everything that was going on, there was a purpose for this tabernacle. They would bring an innocent animal to die in their stead so that they could live physically so. So you could see Yahweh is salvation throughout. You can see Yahweh is salvation with uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They came out of that fiery furnace without even smelling like they had been near a campfire. Um, so that was Yahweh is salvation. Yahweh is salvation to Noah. Yahweh is salvation to uh, Jonah. Yahweh was salvation to um, Daniel in the lion's den. You see it all the way down. And why? Because the Law and the Prophets, you were looking at principles. They were pointing out Yahshua. It was through the death, burial, and resurrection that was being pointed out. And when he went through his death, burial, and resurrection, he is Yahshua. Yahweh is salvation. But his salvation is for eternal life. Read the third verse. Just where you are. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true Elohim and Yahshua Messiah whom thou hast sent. So that's who can give you eternal life. It's his Holy Spirit in you. And it's your spiritual soul that's being saved and going on to this next age, in the kingdom age. And there's ages to come. But we're in a spiritual kingdom age. It's called the present kingdom age because it's a present. He's giving a gift of his Holy Spirit to you during this time only. And we're close. Just like Kathy said, we're very close to the end in the prayer. And we know everything's been manifesting that way. 
Um, that was why I wanted to start with 15, the salvation. Everyone that believeth. Let's go to John um, 14.28. No. 9.28 maybe? Um, where it says it was his work to believe. 628. Thank you. Yeah. John 6 and 28. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of Yahweh? Yahshua answered and said unto them, this is the work of Yahweh, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. Yes, this is the work of Yahweh Elohim. It's not your work, because there were works here in this Mosaic covenant. But it wasn't to be something that was eternal. It was a carnal um, law. It was temporary. It was earthly. It was physical. All these things were works. So they're asking him about a work. There is no work. It's Yahweh Elohim's work to give you that belief. Puts it right in you. Mm -hmm. Same thing with faith. It's, once you have that Holy Spirit, that faith is established in you. It's just like with um, mm -hmm. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the first verse. Let's get it. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And he provides all these witnesses for us, all in the law and the prophets pointing to Yahshua so we know when we come into this class and they start telling you about Yahshua and you go to John, the first chapter, and you see the word and the word um, and Yahweh are one of the same. And then the word came and manifested in the flesh. You understand what that supernal nature is. And it's all the same stuff. When we have a new person, I always go to Isaiah, the 11th chapter, and get the second verse where it talks about Yahweh's attributes of wisdom, knowledge, um, and understanding. And then you can go to um, Exodus, the 31st chapter. And these guys who built this tabernacle were master builders. They could have built this, but he had to put Yahweh Elohim's spirit in them so that it was perfect. And you know what else? It was his work, not theirs, by having his spirit in them. So. I lost my train of thought. What did we just read? Uh, Hebrews, Hebrews 12. 12 and 1. Okay. So he gave us witnesses. all these witnesses, and he gave us the creation to look at. And we know there's a death in the creation in the fall. And the leaves start to fall, and everything looks like it's dying. And then we go through a burial in the winter with our winters used to be horrible, but they've gotten milder, but we've been buried in, in the snow. The spring, everyone's always looking for that rebirth, that resurrection where those crocuses come out and all the beautiful green starts happening again. And then the summer with the glorification. So the, he gives you witnesses in the Bible, witnesses in the creation, science. The baby's good as dead. He's buried in the amniotic fluid and then comes out and takes that breath of life is resurrected mm -hmm. all of these principles just like the uh, larva um, the caterpillar starts eating it gets placed in the chrysalis he's um, buried in this chrysalis he's earthbound after he comes out of this chrysalis He's heavenly, taking on nectar, resurrects. You're seeing a death, a burial, and a resurrection. So many principles. This showing forth the tabernacle. 
it was negative. Things were being burnt in this area. All the offerings, death. Then there was a neutral area, and the proton and the neutron have different sizes, just like this was larger than the holy place, or the most holy place. And this was a neutral area. And this was when the priest went in once a year to do his um, atonement. Positive. Mm -hmm. All the things we look at in the creation show us him. Everything about him. Um, I can't think of anything. I, I know even when I was drawing trees at one time, I started drawing wise. That was way before I came into class. And everything we look at, we, we see the birds going, Yahweh, our, our steps, everything, the wind, everything that we listen to or look at, we're seeing him. And I just, I'm sorry, I can't agree with God being Kinley. And Dr. Kinley, just the more transcripts I continued to read, the more I just couldn't see it. With Dr. Kinley telling you, I'm just a man, and I got it completely full. I mean, he got it all together. We're getting it piecemeal. And it's not as though you're not sealed. It's not as though you don't have the full Holy Spirit, but you're still learning. And there's ages to come that we will be shown more. Yep. Um, that's about all I have to say. I didn't expect to be called, but I'm very happy for the opportunity, and thank you for the time. Our next speaker this evening will be Dr. Deb Cometti. I'd like to say thank you and um, um, continue on with what's been what's I hate that thing what's been brought out the book always your book always falls off in the floor I don't know anyway um, um, it's always weird when it's always weird you know like you know, like Kathy said, I, I'm sorry, I'm not going to try to convince you, and you're not going to convince me, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's fine, um, but it's always weird, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's like the elephant in the room, I don't, well, elephant, I don't know, anyway, I love, uh, where Paul is here in Romans, because um, he he's he's putting it out there. Uh, I want to first just talk about just for one minute, briefly about Paul's conversion, because Paul goes through the motions of a death, burial, and resurrection, mm -hmm. and that is the gospel, and. I'd have to hear more how you get to the conclusion that Dr. Kinley's the gospel, but that's okay. But Carm got First Corinthians, and and that was a that was powerful. And so a Paul, he is so sure where he stands. He's having people killed. Yep. I mean. I could see telling somebody, go over there and slap his face, go over there and, you know, but Paul's having people killed yeah. because he's so sure he's right. Okay. And, and, and that just goes to show how you can be just so wrong. And, um, I've been in class a while and it doesn't matter if you've been in class 40 minutes or 40 years, I get that. But I want to just show where Paul, he is taken through these steps of a death, a burial, and a resurrection. 
okay and he's changed he he's knocked down he has a vision and he's changed and dr kinley said the same thing he was he was in a church he was certain what he was doing he was healing people yes okay he was certain what he was doing and then the next thing you know he wasn't in that church anymore and yashua showed him who he was and yashua said what will you do with this knowledge and you know something? Dr. Kinley didn't know. No. He didn't know what he would do. And Yahshua, Yahweh Elohim, had to tell him, what you're going to do is teach my people. And that's like you said, the ministers were going to be raised. And you know, Dr. Kinley would say he was going to put the ministers' feet to the fire, like Freddie and Dr. Harris and those ones. He was going to put their feet to the fire, and people could ask them questions. Mm -hmm. And he said, if the, if, and if they don't know the answer, the fur's going to fly, because he was raising ministers, okay, to get this gospel out. Why? Because the gospel is going to save you. The death, the burial, the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah is going to save you. Can we have Paul's conversion? Um, in Acts, let's see here. We all know what happens. Paul gets knocked to the ground, right? And the people around Paul, the people that are with Paul, they don't see. They do not see what's going on, right? Go ahead, verse 6. Nine and six. Go ahead. Um, I'll pick it up a little bit. Um, and I'll pick it up in three. And he, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Yep. Now who's... Now... <laughs> Who's Paul persecuting? Yahshua. He's persecuting the, the Yahshuans, right? The, letters, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, that's right. He's persecuting the Yahshuans because Paul hasn't had the light turned on yet. And I'm just making the point at just how much you can think you're right. You know, and Paul, he, I mean, he had, he was a Roman citizen. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. He, you know, he was he was chasing these people down that believed in Yahshua. He was chasing them down. That's what I mean. We just haven't come to it yet. Who knows, right? Go ahead. And he said, "Who art thou, sir?" And Yahshua said, "I am Yahshua, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks." And he, trembling and astonished, said, "Master, what wilt thou have me to do?" And Yahshua said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Okay, drop down to 11. Verse 11. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Nope, you can't drop down. Just read where you were. Okay. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. Seeing nobody. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. He was three days without sight. So we're talking about this death, and we got our principle of three in there. And that's the way Yahshua works his uh, pattern, is death, burial, resurrection, and you got that principle or that manifestation of three, right? He was in the tomb for three days, death, burial, resurrection. Um, Jonah, you can see all these principles, and then there'll be a principle of 40. Go ahead. And there was a certain disciple of Damascus named Ananias. And to him said Yahweh in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here. And Yahshua said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas. For one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. And he hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Now you got to see that that's a resurrection. <laughs> you're, you're, you're blinded. I, I mean, I don't know about you, but that's like the most powerful sensory that we have. You know, I mean, even Medicare will give you disability if you're blind. You know what I'm saying? 
and it'll be early disability. So you got to see that when he receives, that he's going to receive his sight, that's a resurrection. So we're talking about the death, the burial, the resurrection that Paul had to go through. And now we're not going to go through the whole thing of Paul. I just want, you know, parts of that read. And it talks, talks about um, him receiving his sight, scales, they fell from his eyes, and he received food and strength, and then he's going to go on. Now he's in his ministry. He's in, uh, we're talking about him over there in Romans, so as much as in me is. And I believe that's also what our first speaker was, was saying, as much as in her is. That's where she's going with this. And as much as in me is, and as much as in Carm is, is that you're ready to preach the gospel, okay? And Yahshua knows the heart. And I'll tell you what, I cannot spend one waking or sleeping moment thinking about what Yahshua is doing with anybody else. Right. And like Carm said, it broke her heart when people split off. We were in Albuquerque. So we were like in that little chrysalis cocoon. We were all, you know, we were fine. We were in Albuquerque. Yeah. And then we got here and it was like, my husband and I would start saying, isn't it your turn to go? <laughs> no, it's your turn. I got to watch the kids. You go. We didn't want to go to class because of all the jumble. And then in a very short time, like three months, all the, were you in class then? Because you're the dean now of Syracuse. Okay. Because I knew Donna and Dawn. But within three months, two-thirds of the class were gone. And to me, I don't know. It's like a stone in your shoe. And once it's out, you I don't know. It was just, it was class again. So it had to be, in other words. It, it had to be. And they left, and um, we're still here, and they're over there, and, um, you know, never shall the two meet, I don't think. But that's fine, because like Kathy said, she's not here to come, you know, she's not here to, to change our minds, and we're not here to change her minds, but was it more so like administrative, Kathy? I, I just appreciation and... Okay. Okay. So you guys are comfortable. Okay. And are you jeans? Are you jeans replacement? Is, yes. is that, okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> no, absolutely. And that's why I really didn't catch up with the whole thing. Yeah. No, you know, no. and my husband, who I always rely on to keep me abreast, had a, had a 50 year school reunion tonight. So I'm like, I don't know. So here I am. So anyways, I want to go back to 15. What Paul, after Paul went through all that, for as much as is in me is, and that's what I'm saying standing here, and that's what Carm was saying, and that's what Kathy was saying, okay? I am ready to preach the gospel. And Carm was showing you the gospel in the creation, and Carm was showing you the gospel in the birth of a baby, and she was showing you the gospel how the death, burial, and resurrection took place with all these scriptures and with the tabernacle pattern to show you that every time there's a death, there is a burial, and there is a resurrection, and it will not fail. And every time you find yourself in the court roundabout, you absolutely will not stay there. It's an impossibility. For every death, there's a burial. For every burial, there's a resurrection. And then you are moved into a different place. And then you are looking into the most holy place. You're looking right into the MHP, where Yahweh Elohim said that he would be there. And he never once never once wasn't there on the Day of Atonement to say, Atonement's been made. At one minute with Yahshua, or Yahweh Elohim, at one minute. Okay, so now here's Paul. He's received that Holy Spirit. Read on in 16. Romans 1 and 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Yahshua, for it is the power of Yahweh Elohim unto creation to everyone that believes. It's the power. It's the power. It's the power 
of Yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believes. Now, it's not that you, Lionel, read that Bible cover to cover, and now you believe. And so it's the power. No. He gave you the power. He gave you the belief. And she had it read. What's the work of Yahweh Elohim that you believe? See, totally different, totally different than what people, myself included, thought that read. Mm -hmm. And when I was at a convention in Ohio, and I remember the speaker, it was Terry Welch, she broke that down, I thought I was going to fall off my chair. I'm like, this is so beautiful. It's the work of Yahweh Elohim, and it's always been the work of Yahweh Elohim. And when he decided to come forth and make this creation, and he decided to be salvation, this is him on the cross. And I have to agree with Carm. Dr. Kinley said in many places, I'm not your salvation. I am not the one. And like Kathy said, you could miss it. And I definitely agree with that. You could miss it. Because if you don't have Yahshua written in your heart and written in your mind, you could miss it. And I don't mean Dr. Kinley. Because I'll tell you what. Here was Moses. He had the Holy Spirit. He had a job to do. And that was what he did. But he was not the Holy Spirit. Moses was not my Savior. Yes. Okay. Here's Abraham, full of faith. He's not my Savior. Here's Jonah. Here's all these guys. And they got a job to do. And they're showing something. They are giving you the words of Yahweh, but they're not your Savior. And here, can we just talk about this for a minute? This is a body with specially prepared blood in it. Dr. Kinley didn't have that blood in him. I'm sorry. This is a specially prepared body. Get Exodus, or get Hebrews 10 and about five or six. He is specially prepared. And Dr. Kinley was a minister. He was just like Moses and he was just like Paul and he was just like the rest, but he is not your savior. Yahshua is Yahweh is salvation and nothing else can take the place. And if you start muddying up the waters, you're going to miss it. Go ahead. Hebrews 10 and 5. Yes. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not. This was temporary. This was not going to last. Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared. This is not Dr. Kinley. This is Yahshua with specially prepared blood to take away the sins of the world. And that's where he says, call his name Yahshua. He shall save his people from their sins. It doesn't say in 1931, I got another one coming and call him D Dr. Kinley at that time. It doesn't say that. Read on in Hebrews. Wherefore, when he cometh into the, well, um, I mean, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast the head no pleasure. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. I come in the volume of the book. <laughs> Dr. Kinley didn't come in the volume of the book. Dr. Kinley had to receive the Holy Spirit just like you and I. And to say that I'm the head of the body now is not right. And to say that Dr. Kinley's the head is not right. We are the bride. We are part of what Yahshua the Messiah has come down to get us, come down to do something that he might take us back so that Yahweh Elohim would say, well done, my son. Mm -hmm. Well done. Right. But this is the body that was going to save you. And talk about missing it. This is what everybody has to come to to understand when he pours out his Holy Spirit. And he's going to pour it out on whom he's going to pour it out. So here's Paul saying, that's the power. That is the power. And I'm going to tell you something. At John, can we get John's baptism for a minute? 
where is that, Matthew 3.13? Do you want it starting at 11? I no. Oh. I need John 3, 3 and 1, please. Because there were people that thought they knew more about it. Yes. Mm. And they stood on the brink mm -hmm. and didn't come down to the baptism because they knew more about it. And Paul said over in Romans, the heart was darkened, and thinking you were wise, you became a fool. And that's where these people, these big honchos, stood there and said, we're not going down there. We're not going to, you know, John's baptism. Go ahead and read it, Carm. Matthew 3 and 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What's the kingdom of heaven that's at hand? Yahshua. Yahshua is the kingdom of heaven. Right here. That's why she pointed and said that we're in the present kingdom age now. Why? Because that Holy Spirit is in us. We are the body of Yahshua. We're not the body of Dr. Kinley. And, and you can't say it's one and the same because you're, if everything is about the name that's going to save you, that gives you the breath of life, then you're not going to say they're the same. Because it's not the same. Just say Yahshua. It's not the same. And I'll tell you what, when we first came into class, I never thought I'd be here 40-something years later talking about, use the name. I just never... When people first started talking about crazy, I, I tell you what, I, I didn't even think I understood what, what was being said because it was so out there, right? It, it, it's like you're having an out-of-body experience or something. Like, what? When we went to, uh, in 1993, when we went out to California and they were saying all this stuff, and this is where the crazy started, I, I thought I was misunderstanding. I really did. And I was saying to myself, to the speaker on the floor, you better clean that up because you're making it sound like Eve is Adam's carnal mind. That's exactly what he was saying. <laughs> it's, not, it's not correct. I, I mean, we can't change everything and then stare at the ones that don't change and say, well, you're just stuck in the mud. You can't. Dr. Kinley, he said stuff would happen. Crazy stuff would begin to happen. He said that in his last lecture. Mm. And I don't know much, how much crazy you can get them saying, Dr. Kinley is my savior. He's not. And I'm not missing anything. He's not my savior. Right. He's nobody's savior. Right. He's a man. And he had a job to do. And just like Moses and just like Paul, Paul was powerful, but Paul wasn't my savior. Paul wasn't any more special than me. If you got the Holy Spirit, you're special. You're Yahshua's bride. So these people go to seven. Verse seven. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees um, come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh isn't that funny <laughs> generation of vipers who warned you I mean talk about not mincing words I don't know who has warned you okay but they weren't going to come to the baptism apparently they didn't have anything to, to repent to say I was wrong about right because you had to repent you had to confess your sins. And the funny part was about that whole baptism was that there was an unrighteous, no, not one. So, you know, picking up, you know, Moses as a special piece and this one has a special piece and that there's none righteous, no, not one else. He's a bust. He it's a total mess. If you got all these special people and all these, what what did he come for with that blood, that specially prepared blood? He was the only one. And all this, all this is to point him out. Yes. I mean, you want to talk about magnitude. 
you know, it's when people are so powerful, the magnitude of them, like even an Olympian, you know, those people that were out there getting the gold medals, the power, this chick, she looks, I swear, she looks like she's my size. She looks like she got a couple more muscles than me, but she's got long brown hair and she looks like me and she gets out there and she like presses 500 and something pounds. Wow. <laughs> Olivia from Tennessee. The magnitude of that chick and she's amazing, but she is power in that body. Now she's just manifesting Yahweh, his power. If anybody thinks they're doing anything special and it's not anything other than Yahweh just manifesting, <laughs> Like she said, everything within the cloud, right, is within Yahweh. And this whole creation, I don't care who you are, you're part of mankind, or you're part of hippopotamus world, or you're part of being a giraffe, you are within the cloud. You are within Yahweh. And he, he gave Karm that ability to paint. I can't paint. If you want to see me do something, I'm going to stick figure you right here <laughs> but some people have the ability to paint Carm, you had that ability because Joshua gave it to you if you want to sing if you whatever you're great at it's because he gave it to you and it's just manifesting him okay so we're talking about these people that became fools because they would not come to the baptism but you know what they weren't meant to so Paul if I can just go over to Romans for just a minute Pick up Romans 1.19. He, and Dr. Kinley called this one of our um, theme song. Theme. one of our theme songs. And it's a pretty darn good one because people just don't know this in the world. And I think we both know this, right? Your class, my class. I think we both know this, that the whole creation manifests Yahweh's principles. And Karen was talking about it. So go ahead and read it. Romans 119, because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Yes. For Yahweh has showed it unto them. And that's the only way you're going to ever see anything. And that's why Dr. Kinley, when he was showed the vision in Revelation, Yahweh Elohim said, what are you going to do with this? He said, I don't know. Eh, I don't know. The Savior of the world isn't going to say, I don't know. What did Yahshua say? Thy will. I'll do your will. That's right. I wish this cup would pass, but I'll do your will. <laughs> That's what he says. <laughs> Dr. Kinley didn't know. And Yahweh said to Yahweh Elham said to him, Teach my people. And hallelujah that he did come and he was an obedient servant. And it's just like we're obedient tonight, but the gospel is Yahshua's death burial and resurrection according to the scriptures and if you muddy that up and say it's dr kinley what does that mean what does that even mean I, when somebody showed me first corinthians the 15th chapter verses one through four i was so happy I remember I was so happy that I understood and it wasn't all those books matthew mark luke john i was so happy that I could understand it. And to say it's Dr. Kinley now, it is not. It is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Savior. And then he pours out, and this is the result right here. This is the result. And as Peggy so beautifully puts it every time she talks about it, there's no pictures over here to show you what to do. You're free, you're liberated. See, Yahshua, Yahweh is salvation in my heart and in my mind. I'm free. You're free. Go ahead. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Right. Being understood by the things that are made. Right. Even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. And you know what his eternal power and Godhead is? The truth. The absolute truth of the matter. And that's why Paul had to stand up. Paul had to stand up to people. And he had to tell them the truth. And they would put him over the wall and let him down at night because people wanted to kill him. For the truth. For the truth. 
You don't know what you're going to come up against, even personally. Somebody's going to, you know, you're going to tell them, you know, they're born again, they're excited. And then you're going to tell them it ain't Jesus. You don't know what's going to happen. And I was watching these um, people that had wild animals for pets. Okay? A bear, a tiger, and something else. And they thought, by all their kisses and all their treats and their love, they were going to change these wild animals to be something different. And guess what happened? They didn't change it. This guy, 70 years, had this lion. He was called the Lion Man. Guess what happened? Turned his back, and the lion attacked him and ate him. Ate him! Next thing, old Susie over there, she's, every day, she's kissing and hugging on this 350-pound bear. Guess what happened? One day, he was irritated, they said. Oh! irritated he wanted to go hibernate and there was no hibernation in the in the you know place in the cage that's what he did ate her up like there's no face there's no you know there's no left they don't care because why because you think you're more powerful than Yahweh you think you're going to change the nature of the beast you're not and so not saying anybody's a beast. I'm just saying we're not changing you and you're not changing us. And that's why I'm glad Kathy came here to meet us and to say hey, because I didn't know she was taking Jean's spot. But it's still weird. It's still weird when you know there's such a difference in something that was never different. It was never different. No. Okay. And when Kathy saw Carm called up. She's like, I know Carm. Yeah. I put her up. I stayed with her. Yeah. She stayed with her. Yeah, we stayed, stayed with, with you. Them. See what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. It probably won't happen again. I don't know. But I'm just saying. I'm just saying how you're not going to change things. And these people think they're going to change these wild beasts. You're not going to change. Yahshua's going to change your heart and he's going to change your mind. And that's what Dr. Kinley came to do. But when you, because when they knew not, when they knew Yahweh, they glorified him not as Yahweh. They weren't thankful. Okay? They became vain in their imaginations. Just like these people think they got these bears and these tigers and these lions under their thumb. Their foolish heart was darkened, okay? Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And that's where those people, three people, mauled. And the other one, the guy had a hippopotamus. You know how cute they are when they're babies? They're totally cute. They're this big, they're totally cute. Do you know how ugly they are when they're full grown? And the thing is, you know what happens with the hippopotamus? They get mature. They get mature. And suddenly they don't care about you giving them little kisses. They are going to eat you. And that's exactly what they did. They ate him. They ate him because you're not going to change the beast. <laughs> and when I watched that last night, I was like, how stupid to think a, a bear is going to not eat you or a lion. And you know something, Bob? All the guy did was turn his back on the lion. Mm -hmm. That's all he made. They said he made a mistake. Made a mistake. Turned his back. So beware and be watching. Okay. Now I'm done with my discourse and um, I'll turn it back to the moderator. Our next speaker this evening will be Dr. Robert Welch. Good evening again. I don't want to impel you. All right, thank you. Okay. 
Well, <laughs> I hope, hope we all got something out of that. Um, yeah, um, I, I always feel like when I hit the floor, if I hit the floor, <coughs> I absolutely have an agenda. That we're here down here trying to prove that we have salvation through Yahshua Messiah. And I, I think we all, on our side, have a pretty good appreciation of Dr. Kinley as well. I mean, we don't throw him out with the bathwater. No. Nope. You know, <clears throat> the man was sent at the end of the age. In fact, um, you know, everybody's got different transcripts and stuff. And you can read Pine City over there. And <clears throat> it's a big, fat book. Anybody ever read it? Yes. You read all the way through it, and at the end of it, he says, oh, yeah, and by the way, I'm the seventh angel. He didn't say it in the beginning. He didn't go on and on and on about it. It was at the, it was at the end of the transcript. And he said, by the way, you know, I am that seventh angel. Why don't we get it, actually? Does somebody know where that is? Over, it's in Revelation. Mm -hmm. 10 and 7. Is it 10 and 7? So, I mean, we absolutely have an appreciation for the founder. But we also have an appreciation <coughs> for Yahshua Messiah. And as... <coughs> people have worked with tonight showed that, that that was a specially prepared body and it was a sacrificial body <clears throat> and you know we liken that we we have this pattern and the founder was just adamant about trying to understand it I mean I don't know how you can get away finally from I mean I don't see books in front of everybody here you know we we get in okay we, we get into the book here and I've been to some of the classes where they're not using books anymore, you know. And that's not what our founder taught. He taught that we have this pattern. Um, did you find that? Yeah, Revelation 10 and 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of Yahweh should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. I'm going to start it again, Scott. I'm going to interrupt you. <clears throat> but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel. So there's a voice of the seventh angel. <clears throat> there's been voices from the beginning all the way down. He's not the first voice. Has he been? No, he's not the first voice. There's been voices all the way down. But he was sent in this purpose at the end of an age. Right? Go ahead. When he shall begin to sound... The mystery of Yahweh should be finished. Now he's going to begin to sound. He gets a vision in Revelation, and he said that Moses and John's vision, you got them on both ends of the book, right? You got a vision over here with Moses. You got a vision over here with John. And Dr. Kinley said you could put those down in his vision, something along those lines, that he had a great panoramic vision. Panoramic means you go to the top of the mountain, you hike up there, and you can look like this all the way around, right? It's panoramic. There's nothing more to see. You see it all from the top of a mountain. So that's what our founder, we understand what was given to him, because we teach it and get into it all the time, just like he encouraged us to do, right? Go ahead, Scott, if you're still, still there. When he shall begin to sound, the mystery of Yahweh should be finished. So when the founder begins to sound, and as Deb said, he really didn't know what to do when it was handed to him. That was a good point, I thought. He just didn't know until finally it comes into his mind, preach, the, preach and teach the people. Now, what are you doing when you're teaching? People, I think, forget that this is a school. This is a school. You got a book in a school? I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. That's what we do down here. And we have not strayed from what the founder brought. That's the problem here tonight. And that's the problem <clears throat> with the Institute, is there's been a digression or a turning or a rebellion. A rebellion, yes. You've, you haven't embraced what the founder picked up and, and worked. So you have um, <clears throat> embellished something else other than the gospel that Dr. Kinley brought. Because you go into them transcripts, boy, and yes, we know he says things like, well, yes, I was there. You know, <clears throat> he talks in the first person because he can, <laughs> right? But that doesn't mean he died for you, and he says that. So that's the, that's the difference we're trying to make here tonight. There's a founder, 
that didn't die for us, but he was as Paul, as some of the other ones that had the Holy Spirit. Yes. <clears throat> and Dr. Kinley said, if you never met him before he had the Holy Spirit, then you didn't really know Dr. Kinley. So it totally changed and renovated his being. And yes, the Holy Spirit stepped into him. But you know what? He said, he said, it's going to do the same thing for you. Didn't he? Mm. Or we wouldn't be hanging around here tonight. Mm -mm. <clears throat> we got some better things to do. Rick and I'd be down there playing pool in Salve, right? <laughs> we got other things to do if we're if we're not gonna if we're not gonna be part of this amazing creation that he put together, and now we're going into another one. Yeah. How about that? I mean, when you see talking about the law of nature and how Yahweh has put this thing together so tight. Nothing goes to waste. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. You run over an animal down there, next day, there's crows out there eating it. Mm -hmm. He's, there's nothing that goes to waste. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. And then the bacteria will break the bones down. And, you know, uh, you, get, you get these deer out there, they shed their horns, don't they? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden you see them in the spring, they shed their horns. You try to find them. The animals eat them as well. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I mean? There's this balance. And there's a transcript where Dr. Kinley talks about, um, he talks about a woods, a section of woods, and he says, take the woodpecker out of there, mm -hmm. right? Now, you take the woodpecker out, John's not here tonight, <laughs> I could ask you these things. <clears throat> he said, you take the woodpecker out, now you're going to have trees starting to die. Why is that? Insects. The, wood, the, the woodpecker goes and start, you think they're doing a bad thing, knocking on the trees. They're pulling out the insects that are, that are trying to get through the bark into the inner layers. And if they do that, these little insects can kill a tree. If you've been in the Adirondacks, it's happening right now as we speak. These, uh, um, the ones they make the ash, they make the baseball bats. They got to start making them out of something else because, I'll, right? There's a balance to this thing that is unbelievable. Talk about power. Talk about power. Are you kidding me? And he's put these bodies, our physical bodies together so that we can, you know, hang around for 70, 80 years maybe. Not without problems, right? Yeah. We, we're, we're starting to feel those things. Yeah. But he is an incredible creator. And we want to we wanna give him what's due him. Right. We want to give him what he deserves. Don't we? Yes. <clears throat> um, so... Uh, could you repeat your last line there, Scott, if you still got it? Sorry. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of Yahweh should be finished. It's finished. The founder brought in the sound. He was beginning to sound. And when he left the flat, he's done. It's over with. He did leave, but he left something for us. He left us a way to try to understand. And as simple as this pattern seems to be, don't, don't, don't overlook it. Mm. Don't pass it by. And I know we, we may not change your mind, but you know what? We've got to, we've got to speak it. We got to tell you that there is something better than just sitting around talking about just Dr. Kinley. He left us a purpose. He left us a school. Mm -hmm. Are we going to learn something? And I'm going to read it. We're going to do some reading about Dr. Kinley in his words, right? Um, so he's been sent at the end of the age. Go ahead, Scott, please. As he hath declared to his servants, the prophets. As he has declared to his servants, the prophets, right? So now just take this simple idea. That, <clears throat> that cross is in this center age, right? Between the third and fourth. So all we do, we have this pattern. We have this pattern to look at, right? <clears throat> you go back here, and you can see how there was a candlestick. Now you know that the scientists are, are uh, they, they just don't understand how the sun was put in <clears throat> on what day? Fourth. Fourth day. And how did the seed of vegetation come forth? Right. Right away, a science person will say, no, no, it, it, it's baloney, right? <clears throat> but they don't understand Yahweh's purpose. He is the light, right? So you got these principles running through the pattern here in how there's, there's light 
in this body or in this tabernacle. So when you look at this, how this um, <clears throat> is laid out here, this candlestick, it's got three veins that come on either side, right? And it's got one in the center. <clears throat> so if you filled that center with oil, that oil is going to go, because if you read how that was built, it was hollow. It was, it was, if you read technically how it was built. <clears throat> so that oil would have been poured in the center of that candlestick. Now that's the stuff Dr. Kinley brought us. Now, <clears throat> there were people, there's people that still, there's people that use this tabernacle. Don't think there isn't. They're out there. <clears throat> and Jimmy Swaggart, somebody talked about it the other night, how Jimmy Swaggart was teaching it. And the first thing, I'll never forget it, guess what he did? He showed how the, when you had that tabernacle, you had to bring a shekel of the sanctuary. <laughs> That's what he taught. It was the very first thing. He taught how you had to bring money down there, right? <laughs> and guess what? It wasn't long after that. And what he did is he got a whole, he got one of our Elohim books is what he did. Yep. And he's trying to make it his own. And the first thing he does is try to make money with a darn thing. <laughs> Isn't that something? Right? But, but we, <clears throat> we got this purpose going on and it is wonderful because you can go to it and you can see that <clears throat> when that Messiah comes in, he's got to be dead center on time. Why? Because he's going by a pattern. There's something else going on. He's got to show that that oil has to come through him. And you read about it, <clears throat> that all those behind, um, let's, get, let's get it, Matthew 27, <clears throat> um, is it 52? <clears throat> Excuse me. It's just so simple. That's the beauty of this purpose of his. That's what's, that's what's caught us. Do you just want the part about the graves being opened or up above? Um, the veil being ripped? Pardon me? The veil being ripped? Yeah. Okay, 51. I think that's and it. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent from the top to the bottom, mm -hmm. and the earth did quake, and the rocks were split. Okay, talking about veils, so you got to go back to a pattern. If you're going to understand this book, you got to understand something about this pattern. And you can just, just pull up the word tabernacle, and it's all through your concordance. All of them talked about it. Just about all of them talked about it. In, Matthew, um, in the 17th chapter, you got... Yahshua going up and showing and taking that flesh off in front of these guys back here and he's fulfilling what? He's fulfilling the scriptures. Mm -hmm. I mean these simple things that we, we've heard over the years you know, but they've given us some foundation. You can't tell me that that's not a fulfillment of something. When Yahshua's in the flesh and I was just listening to a tape where the founder said there's not a thing that he did that was not fulfilling. Mm -hmm. He did not institute a dang thing. Right. Nothing. Nothing. He didn't institute a thing. Everything he did. So you can come and see how, geez, what's he fulfilling here? Mm -hmm. He had to come back here as Joshua, Yahshua going up that mountain. Right? He was there. <coughs> he was there. So then he goes up and he transfigures. Well, how do you know that? Well, he's showing you that, yeah, he transfigured here just like he did back here. There's a fulfillment going on. That's something. Yes. That is something that, that, uh, that our founder brought down here. It's this school. It's this teaching. It's this understanding of our creator. Right? Yeah. Don't go pushing it. If you push it aside, that's, that's when we get in trouble. You don't push this pattern. Aside. You don't put this pur push Yahweh's purpose aside. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. And that's what we're here telling you tonight is you don't want to do that. If you do that, you are at stake of losing your soul. Maybe you don't think you have one, but we understand there's a soul. And <clears throat> Yahweh can either save it. There's, there's a place for both of those. There's only two places, right? <clears throat> um, was there more there? And the graves were opened, mm -hmm. and many bodies of the sons that slept were raised. That's what I want. Thank you. <clears throat> many... Could you repeat that? Sorry. The graves were open. The graves were open, right? This is when Yahshua expires, isn't it? Mm. He's taking off the flesh. He's taking that last breath. We're talking about the breath. Well, when he expires, 
Everything is in fulfillment. He expires the last breath and what, Deb? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and the graves were opened. And the graves were opened. The graves were... Who opened... Anybody got a cemetery near them? We got a cemetery near us. You got... Oh. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Jen's just focusing the camera. I thought she was pretty good. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> right? The graves were open. I've never seen open graves before. Has anybody ever seen open graves in here? Yeah. Just when you bury somebody, yeah. right? right. right? You see an open grave. So out, out of the graves, go ahead, Deb. Mm -hmm. The graves were open. Yes. Many bodies of the sons that slept were raised. There were some sons laying on in there. There were some, they didn't get cast away. They didn't get forgotten. They were included in this purpose, right? <clears throat> they were included, and he's bringing them up. Go ahead. And came out of the graves after his resurrection. They came out of the graves. Are you kidding? Didn't you talk about power, Romans 1, yes. the first chapter? Yeah. Yes. The power of Yahweh, this gospel, is the power of Yahweh? Yes. We proclaim down here that Yahshua has brought us out of the grave. Yes. That's what we preach down here. And it's and Dr. Kinley is definitely part of this whole thing. We understand that. That he brought he was the seventh angel that brought this gospel to us and it corroborates and it does the it, it, it's the same thing that, and he said if I teach anything other than what Moses and John taught don't come back anymore right and that's why we're still here because he taught the same things that Moses and John were looking at we see that this is a conclusive panoramic vision that Dr. Kinley was led into and he has shared it and you know I remember Mitch saying sometimes he said I remember because he lived with Doc for a while he said I just remember Doc in there crying and he said there's times where he said when he cried it sounded like it came from his shoes his feet all the way up out of him he said he was just he would just mourn and cry what do you think he's looking at you know what do you think he's looking at so we understand who was in that body we understand that the dr kinley that was before was no more we understand that he had a purpose just like as Deb was talking about Paul and how Paul was special he couldn't even go into the congregation because he was what um, he was a eunuch a eunuch. a eunuch couldn't go in it's like he had nothing to do with going into the temple like all the big shots but here he always got him teaching him over here with Gamaliel he's just over here in the corner can't go into can't go in there he can't go in amongst all them 70 that were in there and those 70 came all the way down. Hopefully I'll get a minute to touch on that. <clears throat> right? So here we got some graves being opened. Uh, could you repeat that, mm -hmm. Deb? That the graves were opened and many bodies of the sons that slept were raised and, and then, came out of the graves. And they came out of the graves. But not until it, Yahshua's got it. There you go. Back to this book. There's this Feast of the First Fruits. Well, who cares about that? It's back there in the law. Because Yahshua is showing that he's going to come up the first fruits. He's coming out of there first. Then all these sons that were back under, back under the law, right? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of them. Daniel, right? He didn't forget about them. He's pulling them all in there. What does that mean? That means when that spirit was poured, when Yahshua <coughs> uh, expired there, and that spirit showed that it goes both ways in that candlestick. Isn't that something? You can look at something like that, something so simple in this tabernacle, to show you something about how that spirit works. Isn't that something? Man, I'll tell you, what a creator. And he comes in, and he's that center. And that is only where that Holy Spirit can be manifested out through, both before and after, right? That's it. You're not going to get it another way. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and Dr. Kinley was down here, and he absolutely had a purpose at the end of this age. He absolutely had a purpose. You betcha. Where would we be without that? Where would we be out without Dr. Kinley, right? Let, hanging, <clears throat> doing what he has for us down here at the end of the age. But we, <clears throat> we understand that there was one body, and that was what Dr. Kinley preached. 
he preached that <clears throat> that body. Was that it there, Deb? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, all right. I think what I'll have you do is I want to talk, well, we'll talk, who wants to read some of this? This would be um, December 20 something, 75, his last, Dr. Kinley's last lecture, right? Um, do you want to read, Scott? Um, start where you think up here, and we're going to read just a, a bit of that, okay? I'll make a point. Um, I don't know if you got the front cover, if you can tell exactly what the transcript's called. It's his last lecture. That should be interesting, right? His last lecture? <laughs> Um, this is a transcript of Dr. Henry C. Kinley's last lecture, yeah, okay. Sunday, December 21st, 1975. Thank you. 1040 South Grand Ave, LA, mm. California, at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. If you want specificity on that. That's perfect. <laughs> that narrows it down. That's good. All right, so this is page four. Um, I guess we'll start. Let's see. Uh, now, since we have now come to school, try to learn all you can. Give until it hurts toward the peace mission. Now, if you believe, now listen to what I'm saying. If you believe any parts of the Bible, you think it's true, you will do what you can to help this peace mission. So he's talking about peace missions. He's first of all, and there's a little more be ahead of this, but <clears throat> I wanted to cut some of it out. He says, learn all that what? Learn all you can. Get it all. And, you know, that's the beauty of this class. That's what I loved about this class is people work with everything down here. They showed, you know, I've, I've worked with automobile engines and in a, in a car and showed how um, there has to be a firing that takes place. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, it's the pattern of everything. We say it all the time. And everybody has that gift of how to show such and such, and, and Brooke has worked stuff in the body that's been quite incredible as well. So, um, yes. Okay, go ahead, please, Scott. Uh, you will do what you can to help this peace mission, this gospel to be spread in all the world. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Now, since you, you pay attention now, since you are the only ones that know anything at all in reality about the truth, then it is imposed or incumbent upon you to see it. Now, I gotta say, now, if, and, and I remember we've talked with Mitch about peace missions and all this. Now, a lot of times they put Dr. Harris up and he would work the pattern and different things. Now, how many peace missions were there? There were three peace missions, right? So, um, what we're gonna find out here, right, is that these peace missions were preached with a basic doctrine from the transcripts I've seen, right? In other words, they've, uh, kind of what our aims talks about, or uh, um, our purpose is, right? You, you, you teach from the charts, you teach the names, you teach the tabernacle, you teach these different things in class, it's kind of a basic. Now, if now it's being taught that you have to know who Dr. Kinley is, that wasn't talked about so much on the peace missions as it is now, right? Do you know what I'm saying? In other words, they were promoting a gospel that when they went around and gave three witnesses to the world. Three witnesses to the world. Now, if that doctrine wasn't right, and you may be saying that's for a time put back and blah, blah, blah. No, I'm the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's the same creator we're talking about. <clears throat> then somebody's got to go back and do three more peace missions. That's all I'm saying, is if there's something, if there's something that we're not teaching here that now you're teaching or some other people are teaching, it's all about the founder, then you're going to have to go back. You're going to have to go back. The job wasn't done. So you might say, well, Dr. Kinley didn't really understand it. Wait, what? I mean, I've heard some crazy, there's crazy stuff out here now. You know, <clears throat> that Dr. Kinley. So, and he couldn't go on the last one, I believe. Right. And that's what, yes, and I think, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, just keep going, Scott, if you would, because I think it's in here. 
Um, you're the very folks that he's talking about in the 24th chapter of Matthew. You're the folks, see, that he talks about to carry this message in all the world. How about that? 24th chapter. Go ahead. Now listen, you know as well as I do, you have religious confusion all over the world. Mm -hmm. You know you have ecclesiastical confusion or religious confusion. You know you have it all over the world. Mm -hmm. You know you have political confusion all over the world. They don't know what to do about political associates. You have economic situations and conditions all over the world. Is that right? Mm -hmm. They don't know what to do about any of it. Ford don't know, Congress don't know, and the UN don't know. They just don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. What is happening is this. You've gotten down to the place where you've got to be diligent in your search, you see, in order to learn anything. So you got to, we're down to the point. And Dr. Kinley, from my understanding of him when he taught, was always preaching that you might not make it till tomorrow, right? And guess what? Tonight, we might not make it till tomorrow. We might not get out of this room. This might be the last chance. The last chance saloon, right? This is the last one. This could be the last one. And Dr. Kinley taught that way, that you don't know. Although he did say, in one of these he said, um, in 1975, there were so many other organizations, Jehovah's Witness, a couple other ones that predicted the end of the world in 75, and it didn't happen. So that's in here too as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm just making the point. Go ahead, Scott, please. So now what, you ha what is happening is this. You've gotten down to the place where you've got to be diligent in your search, you see, in order to learn anything. You've got to be diligent in your search. You've got to be diligent. Go ahead. The Apostle Paul says this, prove all things, mm -hmm. hold fast to that which is good. Mm -hmm. Now for me to stand up here and say something to you and then can't prove it, see, that's bad. You follow? Mm -hmm. Now you don't have no long time to get straightened out. Some of us have been in this school for a long time, haven't got straightened out yet. Mm -hmm. So don't you feel too bad about it, see? Apostle Paul says again in Hebrews that you should pay the most earnest heed to the things that you hear, see? Yeah, don't worry if you're not up to speed yet, mm -hmm. because you're in the right place. I think is what he's trying to say. You know, you're right. Go ahead. Freddie, go ahead and read it. Freddie Allen, second chapter of Hebrews. Dr. Kinley, I haven't forgotten you ought to pay the most earnest heed to the... Now, he was talking to the Jews. Uh -huh. He wasn't talking to the Gentiles, see? To the things that you hear. Why so? Lest at any time you let them slip, see? Now some of these things that have been told to you about this work, you let them slip. And I want to say this, um, it's been brought out that a lot of the letters of Paul's were written to those in charge of Ro in Rome, or in Corinthian, or uh, Greece, or, right? He's, he is writing them, he's not writing them to Gentiles, but that does not mean it doesn't apply to us. It still applies to us today. There's a con little controversy with that, you know, that those letters were just written to the Jews uh, that were in charge of those areas, right? But they had their problems, right? Go ahead, Scott. Therefore, it is necessary for you to come back to school, catch it up, see? Then yep. what that happens, this is the next thing that happens, a root of bitterness springing up here among you where many be devoured. Now, there can be a, a root of bitterness that can spring up. It can do that. That's what he's talking about. Go ahead. Read that, would you please? Freddie, therefore we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. So what things? Those things that went out on the peace missions? Apparently for three times, they must have been significant enough to bring the world to its knees. <coughs> Is there any doubt of that? It taught, and, and uh, um, the Elohim book, the textbook, um, you can go in there and see how um, those things that were brought out in these peace missions brought the world to its knees. It brought the world down. In fact, it said, I was just reading something about it in 61, um, and then 62, 3, 4, and there was like five years where they had ecumenical councils. It's in the fourth volume of the textbook in the first few pages, like three and four. And it talks about that, that gospel going out to the um, clergy and how they reacted. 
in how they had these ecumenical councils. And then they had a guy in there that they were talking about that um, was a psychiatrist in how he was a psychiatrist to all the priests in these different uh, religions, Catholic, because they couldn't make heads or tails. They themselves couldn't understand the doctrine. They're going to a psychiatrist to figure it out, right? You understand? It was that confusing to even the priests that are preaching it. That's what I'm saying. We're not confused down here. I mean, I say we all say things that are off or whatever, but our, we're, we're not confused about this right here. We are not confused that Yahshua is our salvation at, at the end of this age. That's right. And that it was brought down here and by the, the founder, Dr. Kinley, and and there's so many others that were down. You know, Hebrews talks about it. He has a whole list of those that had the Holy Spirit down through the ages that, you know, um, that were there with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Go ahead, Scott. Okay, uh, a root of bitterness springing up here among you, whereby many be devoured. Mm -hmm. that, would you please? Afraid. He, therefore, we, this is uh, Hebrews 2 and 1. Mm -hmm. three. Therefore, we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things we have heard. Left right. at any time we should let them slip. Mm -hmm. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, in every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Dot dot dot. So he's talking about there was an angelic creation, right? And in the in that angelic creation, um, there was some things that happened there that had a just recompense of reward. In other words, the mystery of iniquity was kicked out. It's the 12th chapter of Revelations, right? So those things, just even in the angelic, the truth proceeded, right? Or it stood. The truth stood up there with the angels in the 12th chapter, how it talks about them, right? And how they overcame him by what? Deb was talking about it, right? Our speakers have been talking about it. The blood of, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. That's how the angels overcame. And Satan was cast out of heaven, and Dr. Kinley says, well, that's just who, we gave Michael that job to do that little job or something like that. Said, <laughs> Anyways, go ahead, Scott, please. So that was Freddie reading Hebrews 2 and 1. Yep. Now Dr. Kinley says, now you're not going to get away with that, see? Yep. Now you get that learned. You needn't think uh, to bring you back now so you can see what I'm talking about, see? These preachers, because they know that's the true name and they haven't been using them, see? Mm -hmm. and now they've found out about them. And now they're very careful about not using them. Now that don't mean that they've gotten away with something. Just don't mean that, you follow, all right? How shall, and then Freddie reads, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, yeah. which at the first began to be spoken by Yahweh? Right. And Dr. Kinley says, did you finish where you were reading? Question? Freddie, yes. Yeah. Now Dr. Kinley, we ought to... That's, yeah, that's, that's what I'm after. Note, right. Yep. So Dr. Kinley says, we ought to pay strict attention to the things that you hear, lest at any time we let them sleep. Now this is his last lecture, supposedly. Mm -hmm. You should pay attention to these things. Go ahead. And then comes a root Excuse of bitterness. Mm -hmm. That's in there too, up above there. Mm -hmm. Now a root of bitterness, see, springing up. Now somebody will come along after coming to this school, see. I'm going to call your attention to it. Ah, uh, after hearing these charts explained primarily raised in this school. Hearing these charts explained, primarily raised in school, go ahead. Right. Been around here a long, long time. Been around here a long, long time. Come up out of the clear blue sky, say things against that which you have been taught. Yeah. Now see, if you hadn't learned your lesson, you'd be carried away with it. See, so he's, he's showing that this is not uncommon and this is going to happen, and it's happening where? In the Catholic Church? Right here. In the school. Mm -hmm. Right here. We have separated. There's a schism. There's a separation. Right? And we can't, we can't do anything about it. And, I, you know, Deb was talking about how our class split, and I remember just how powerful it was. There was no stopping it. You know, there was no... I mean, we got together, and we tried to hash some stuff out, if you remember, and... Things weren't hashed out. There was just this, right? There's a great gulf. And, and hopefully, we're just trying to be sincere for the people that have come. To, we appreciate you coming here to see. But we got to give you what we know, what Yahshua showed us. That's all we can do and hope 
we hope the best for somebody. All we want to see is us all in the next age with our Creator, right? right. And in a harmony in that body of Yahshua. Right. Mm -hmm. we, that's what we want. We've, we've, been, we've had faith in that for some time, and we've seen witnesses for it, and it's been powerful. You, it's hard to shake, you know, it's like shaking the dog off the maggot wagon or gut wagon, they say, you know. You can't, you can't do that. <clears throat> You're not going to move them. You're just not going to move. Go ahead, Scott. Sorry about that. Scott. All right. So been here, been here a long, long time. Yep. Come up out of the clear blue sky. Come up. Been here a long time. Come up out of the blue sky. Go ahead. Say things against that which you have been taught. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now see if you hadn't learned your lesson, you'd be carried away with it. Yep. Yep. Go ahead. Well, I'm going to tell you this. You're not going to get away with it. Who's ever doing that? Who's ever doing this schism thing? That's what's scary. It says you're not going to get away with it again. You're not getting away with it. I don't know whoever it is out there. You're not going to get away with that. With trying to change this doctrine. Other than what the founders brought. Go ahead. Now that brings me to say one other thing before we let up, Dr. Harris. And that's this. Now, it was said that you have to get away from blood, water, and spirit. Mm -hmm. Come up off it. Right. Blood, water, and spirit. <clears throat> now, I just want to show you how little the person understood about that that made the remark <laughs> that you were going to have to come get up off it. Right. In other words, they meant that you're going to have to go on further than that. Spirit, right. Than blood, water, spirit. Right. He goes, first, let's see what spirit. And then it says, the third chapter of 11th Corinthians, I believe, in the 17th verse. So then, then he says, now Yahweh is spirit. Now, are you going to get up off of that? Right. So, you know, it just, it just gets, when he says things like that, it's just ridiculous, right? How can we move away or apart from something that is just an example? That's what this whole creation is. It's an example to show us his great power, his foundation, all these attributes. That's what he's trying to show us. That's what he's trying to show us. Don't exclude... Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. Don't exclude him from the purpose by putting Dr. Kinley in there. It, it doesn't fit. It doesn't, you, you're, you're, and you know what? You're not giving him his due. That's right. He's due this glory. That's right. He's due this glory. And Dr. Kinley, I, I, you know, I listen to those, those transcripts sometimes, uh, the lectures, and he says things like, you know what? <clears throat> He says, I don't want to be up in front of all the, uh, uh, um, being the big shot. Dr. Kinley says, I don't want to be the big shot. That tells you something. That tells me, he, yeah, he's God in a body. We give him that for sure. We're not trying to yank his rank, you know. <laughs> yes, we understand that he was sent at the end of the age. And hallelujah for that, that the founder did that. <clears throat> but we also understand that that Holy Spirit has to come right there, right through the center of that candlestick. And there it is, right there, and it's in your book. There's a candlestick in your book, right? Um, Deb, can you give me a quick, because we've only got a minute. <clears throat> I want to read something in Numbers. Uh, we don't have much time. 16th chapter. <clears throat> You started one quick. Oh, geez. We're Number 16 it. and 1. Now Korah, the son of Ishhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abraham, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Paleth, son of Reuben, took men. Right. He rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Now look, this is something that's gone on right from the beginning of time, right? After the flood... Where's the Tower of Babel? Is it up here? It's on the other chart. It's on the other chart. Oh. Yes, thank you. Right? Tower of Babel. After the flood. This time Yahweh won't drown us out. We're going to build all the way up, right? <clears throat> they turned away from the purpose. The purpose wasn't to flood the world again by water. It just wasn't. They were not in sync with the purpose, right? They had their own thought about it. And because of that, Yahweh just confused Babel means confusion. Confuse the whole world. So when you go against the purpose of Yahweh, it's going to manifest. But it's going to be, there's going to be some confusion there. 
Go ahead, Deb, please. <clears throat> and they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, You take too much upon you. Oh, now these are the same guys. Don't forget, these were the same guys that were coming up out of here. And when they saw that cloud up there banging, they said, No, Moses, you go talk to them. We, we, we don't want no parts of that kind of power. We're talking about power when the whole ground's shaking. You ever been in an earthquake with everything under your feet moving? Where do you go? Right? <clears throat> That's what's going on here. Go ahead, Deb. You take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation is holy, every one of them, and Yahweh is among them. And if you look up their names, they had, they had um, a, a job to do with the tabernacle, to take it down and bring it back up, the Kohathites, and you can read about these guys. But they got together. Men of renown. Yes. Mm -hmm. Men of renown. Yep. And I'm not accusing of anybody of anything. I'm just saying these are the principles that are through our book. Go ahead, Deb. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves among the congregation of Moses, Yahweh? Moses, Aaron, why did you lift yourself up? You kidding me? When he got the name, he said, I don't want to go to Egypt. Are you kidding? That's the nature we're talking about. That's what the gospel does, is it humbles you. And how many times did things go on back there? And Moses just hit the dirt. He just, boom. He just laid it down. He just didn't want any parts. He knew, he knew the power. He saw, he saw something up there that was powerful. Go ahead, Deb. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. Yeah, there he goes again, falling on his face, right? Get, it, it's blasphemous. See, when you get, go against this Holy Spirit, it's blasphemous. When you go against the purpose of Yahweh, it's blas you're blaspheming. If you're giving somebody else the credit other than Yahshua the Messiah or Yahweh Elohim, ultimately Yahweh, then you have dissed him. You've dissed him. Go ahead, Deb, please. And he spoke unto Korah and even upon all the company, saying, Even tomorrow Yahweh will show you who are his and who is holy and will cause him to come near unto him. So he, him, he's got a way of dealing with this. Go ahead, Deb. Even him who he hath chosen will he cause to Man. come near unto him. This do, take your censers, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before Yahweh tomorrow. It shall be that the man whom Yahweh doth choose, he shall be holy. You take too much upon you, you sons of Levi. Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray ye, sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you, that Yahweh of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel? Right, Deb, go to 21. Verse 21. Separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. This is Yahweh saying unto Moses. Go ahead. And they fell upon their faces and said, O Yahweh, the Elohim of spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin and wilt thou be angry with all the congregation? Right, right. And Yahweh spoke unto Moses saying, speak unto the congregation saying, get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Datham, and Abraham. And Moses rose up and went unto Datham and Abraham and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spoke unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in all their Re sin. Remember, this is Israel. This is in the body of Israel. Separate. You know what? Make some room, because. Go ahead, Doug. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Datham, and Abraham on every side. And Dathan and Abraham came out and stood in the doors of their tents, their wives, their sons, and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that Yahweh has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own mind. Yes. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they are visited after the visitation of all men, yes. then Yahweh hath not sent me. Right. But if Yahweh make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up, and all that appertains unto them, and go down alive into Sheol, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked Yahweh. If Yahweh makes this new thing, and Yahweh took care of that, he separated them. Right? So that's the kind of power. And you can run this all the way through the book, how um, Israel just kept rebelling and rebelling and rebelling. And we don't want that for anybody. We want to keep this doctrine as straight as it was preached from the founder all the time. And it was straight. And we fear that if it isn't, if, you're, if there's something else taught, like this whole Dr. Kinley thing, we're scared for you. We're scared for anybody, and we hope 
that everyone gets to see the truth, you know? So I, with those words, I know I'm running late here. Um, I, I hope somebody got something out of it. Thank you. Before I close class with the doxology, on behalf of the Syracuse class, I would like to thank all of our visitors that traveled so far. We truly appreciate you being here tonight. Can we all please rise for the doxology. The doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude of the Holy Name Bible. Now unto him who alone is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise Elohim, the Yash the Messiah, our Sovereign, belongs glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. May we all say in one voice, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.